It hasn't rained in this landscape for quite a while. So a little sprinkle the other day, but not enough to soak in. It's been a dry start to the season. And in about an hour or two, it looks like the radar, the models are showing that we're gonna get a significant amount of rain uh, today. So I'm scrambling this morning to clean out gutters and organize things. I thought I would take folks along on what it is that I do in preparation for uh, a big rain and how to hold as much of that water as possible. So stick around. Most folks that watch the channel know that we run our pretty much our entire operation on collected rainwater. And here is the least or one of the less elegant looking systems, but very functional systems. This is a tank that's been here for seven years. Uh, it's, you know, it's got algae on the outside, algae in the interior, it still flows. So it's fine enough. Our system for collecting rainwater is super low tech and simple. In this case is just a four inch uh, drainage tile plastic flexible tube that dumps to a couple layers of mesh. We've landed on this as a really simple thing over the years. I'll take this and knock it out. This is part of the work in advance of collecting uh, big rain is to clear these catches out. Now you can get this as elegant as you want, but it's kind of nice to see a system where this has worked well. It captures most of the rain. We'll need to clean that out. If we get a pulse of really intense rain, I need to get out here during the rain and clean that. If I can make the time, I'll get up on a ladder and clean out all the downspout spots, get as much debris out as possible. An intense rain uh, after a long time of no rain tends to be a flushing rain, which means it'll bring a lot of debris down. So getting in there and cleaning that out in advance of it is helpful. Planning to put on a rain jacket in the midst of it and cleaning it out is also reasonable because uh, sometimes what'll happen is there'll be a pulse of rain, a lot will get flushed, it clogs even though you cleaned it before or one has cleaned it before and it starts overflowing. We've seen that many a time. This is an older home. This is an old gutter system. I'm really showing you the, the far end of the scrappy DIY here, but it's also our reality and it works. And this might overlap with a lot more of what folks have access to. Going to buy everything brand new and beautiful this day and age is hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You can do it with what you got. Speaking of going really simple, here is an idea for a gutter. This has worked for about six years now. This is some scrap of drainage pipe, rigid drainage pipe that I got for free from somewhere, I can't remember when, with a really rough and tumble jigsaw cut down the length of it. Um, screwed into the structural members of this homemade, low-cost, simple greenhouse that was built a long time ago. And this is not the best gutter by any stretch, but it's decent. You can see it bows a little here, it dips a little there, but overall it's aiming in the right direction. This is one I just went through with my fingertips and cleaned all of that out. You can see I put a little wire tie in one spot where it bowed to bring it back up again. At some point, I'll do that a little bit more, but it's working fine enough. And as of this morning, we now have a new catch system here. Again, super low tech, really simple. The last hurrah, it just dumps out free, falls down and now it goes into a washed out bucket that has half inch mesh on the top. So this would be our pre-filter for material. Easy to get that off, take this off and knock it. There's one below that's folded over a few times with a brick to keep it up. And then a little scrap of salvaged hose into a metal tank. And of course, we always put logs and material in here in case an animal or a bird falls in. And we'll see, I think this might fill with the amount of rain that's coming today. Same ragamuffin gutter system here. It's two ply, so it's extra strength. <laughs> I'll take my hand and run it down through this, clean it out. Very glamorous, very elegant work. But doing this now means I can do it while I'm chatting and making a fun little simple video instead of out in a raincoat in a cold driving rain. Now, don't get me wrong, that's exciting, but I don't mind getting the bulk of it done in advance. Now here, this is an area where we pot up plants. It's easy just to put a sled there. We were just using this as a soaking tank for potted plants recently. It's a short commute from here over to our tables where we do potting up and seeding out. And so having a raw, unfiltered, simple, simple system here, we can dip in with buckets, we can soak plants. That feels easy enough. That took about two minutes. And once we empty that, we can pour it, the last little bits of it out, rinse it out and put it away. 
or leave it there for the summer if it's compatible. Our dog Lenny really likes to splash around in cold water on a hot day, so uh, I rinsed it enough that maybe it stays fresh enough for his desires for a bit. I made a video a ways back about a very, very simple home-built gutter screen. You can see it here on the north side of our garage, and this captures and sends into this tank, which equalizes amongst three tanks. And this is again half inch hardware cloth, which was just cut with um, some tin snips. It's straight on this side, it goes right under the roof metal, it's folded over on this side so it kind of clicks into position. And that mesh has worked pretty decently for filtering the bulk of debris. Leaves and twigs tend to shed over the top. There's a fair bit of gunkies in there. At some point I'll probably have to take this off and wipe that out. But what I did is I left the tail end open right here. This is something I should clean before the rains come. So this gutter, it's a little bit simpler maintenance than some of the other ones. I've got this little catch here. I don't know that I would need to buy this. This is just this rolled into a cylinder, so maybe I won't buy that in the future. And come through and get the bulk of this material out so that as the rain is rushing through, it can freely flow. Sometimes the material you clean out of the gutters is incredibly rich. This has been here for about a year or so. I, I'm definitely in a place where I think after this rain, I need to take this gutter guard off and do my first deep clean. This has been on, I think, for three years, working pretty nicely. Uh, but it's, I can feel like it's, it's needing to get a little bit tidied up. But it's worked well, and the price was right. This is about a dollar for all this. And this stuff, for some reason, smells exactly like really nice patchouli. Maybe that'll be a new product line. We'll squeeze that out into a bottle and offer it up as essential oils. A really simple modification to the downspout on these IBC tanks, which is pretty much the main unit we work with. Standard cinder block, if you're using four inch drainage pipe, which is really easy to find, it's flexible, there's easy matings from this to standard gutter, but you can also just have it go in the gutter and put a screw in it, as you see here. So a random length of this, uh, it fits right through the hole of a cinder block and the cinder block resting on top keeps the position exactly where it needs to be. Can always move this if needed. It's not that easy to move, but it's, you know, fine enough. And then here I can clean this out. There is something to be said, if you can have a downspout kind of come flat towards the end or aim at the incoming port for your IBC tank and have the mesh, the filter, be in this sort of profile. So the water's flowing out and wants to fall in, but caught material can slide across and be flushed, it auto filters a little bit better. Probably describing that in way more complex of a way than I need to. A pile of mesh, this could be a couple of layers of chicken wire, anything you got laying around. You could put door screen on this, but I would dissuade you from doing it. You don't need that level of filtration for catching. You can always filter it later. Um, use your own judgment there. But this shunting profile lets the water in and the material gets flushed out. I'll be cleaning debris from over here later on. We talked about our grain storage upgrade recently and I mentioned how important it is to tape over the tops of these. Well, guess what? I didn't do it. So if I don't do this before a really intense rain, these two containers of seed are going to be absolutely ruined. So let me go ahead and do that. Some heavy duty duct tape and about a minute of thoughtful effort and we should be able to hold on to another 200 to 300 pounds of whole seed that would otherwise have gotten water in there and been ruined. It's the little things that get you. The roof of the chicken coop is right under this ginormous pin oak which drops so much debris. I clean this quite a bit. This is the, the razor blade gutter. Probably better to wear gloves, although my hands are made of gloves at this point, so it doesn't matter to me. But it works, it's still functional. Here we're using roofing screws, and I just used a pair of pliers and took a scrap of random uh, roofing metal that was laying around. The rooster's loud today. And folded it into a gutter-ish profile with a little bimp on the end to hold the water on this end. And this has worked for about eight years, fine enough. You don't want to slide your hand over this. This would do well to be shaved or um, sanded over or put a little rubber or silicone or something nice but this works just as it is some gutter cleaning asmr for those of you that are into it it's 
the glorious aspects of making everything by hand out of scrap stuff is you get to get involved in this sort of... Ooh, listen to that. That's good. Must be done, though, because this gutter is not extremely pitched in the right direction. And so with enough debris, it will just overflow right onto the grain bins. And with the debris cleared, it's going to run the way it needs to. Here's a place where having a rainwater tank at the end would be good. It flows and drops there. We have a platform here where we used to have a tank, but the platform's gotten wobbly. It's pretty high up. We don't really critically need the water here. It's a little bit of a liability for the hens. So we don't have anything collecting here. It's a missed opportunity. There should be at least a barrel or a container to catch some water and make sure the overflow goes back to this drainage channel. So maybe I'll play with that for a second. Sometimes the work I do in getting prepped for a rain or just to do maintenance on these really super simple, grimy, but <laughs> functional low cost systems is to actually flush the gutter. So here I've got some rainwater from another system and I'm just gonna pour this in. I'm not sure how well I can film this, but I'm gonna pour this in and let it run down through the line and that'll help move some debris and also verify that it's running the way it should. In fact, if I keep pouring, it should just keep flushing and it should go down on the other end where it ought to. Let's go check it out. There we go. Doing what it needs to do. I could go up there and now with the uh, water be able to wipe a little bit better. Could I use gloves? Could I use a tool? Absolutely. I would encourage you to do so, but here I am doing it how I do it. A lot cleaner. Certainly could be a little bit better in the middle, but I'm not going to put more effort into it. This container is less than ideal, but it exists in our midst. We found this on the side of the road getting thrown out. It wasn't recycling day, so I figured let's put it to use. It's a nice low height, so it's easy for the hens to get access to it. But more importantly, the water that falls here, instead of going back towards the post that holds the coop up, will overflow into a drainage ditch that we have. Again, is it aesthetically super pleasing? I kind of don't care. I don't think the chickens care. It feels ethical and it feels functional. The wind is starting to really pick up, so filming is a little bit harder, but also I need to be wrapping up what I've been working on with these gutters. Got some debris on there. Uh, and actually get some planting done, some seeding done, whatever I can do before the rains really settle in. I hope folks take our system with a grain of salt and recognize what my goal in offering this up, being raw and real about how we collect rainwater, is first and foremost about empowering folks that feel like they couldn't do it or that they don't have the money, they don't have the resources, they don't have the skill, the time. You definitely do. I mean, you can use all sorts of stuff to collect rainwater. It could be buckets, it could be, you know, tarps around hay bales, so many creative solutions. Certainly could be IBC totes, but wherever you live, it feels like rain, at least in the Northeast in particular, rain is something that it's less of an even flow coming in and more of these extreme punctuated moments. It should be a little shy of two inches of rain between today and tomorrow and the next day, which is many thousands of gallons uh, coming off of our roof areas. How do we collect it, semi-filter it in a good enough way and get on with life and hopefully protect some of the infrastructure that we have a little bit and not buy tons of new material to accomplish those goals.